There's another one you don't want to hear. Frankly, if it's a wife. Right now on the Power Record Hour, I'm very excited to be talking to Leo of the Isle of Wight Band, Reminders. The band just released their debut record called Best of Beach Punk that is out now in the States on Wiretap Records, over in the UK, over on Venn Records. You can go grab it everywhere. We're going to talk about this new record, and uh, we're going to talk about it with the man who wrote it, Leo. Leo, how are you? How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm great. It's, it's lovely to be speaking with you. I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. I uh, I love this record. I'm happy to finally uh, not get it out. You got it out, but I'm happy to see it out and for everyone to listen to it. I've really been uh, I've been looking forward to it. Again, I was telling you before we started. I mean, the whole thing is just really, really damn good. I think people are going to like it. And I know you just finished up. I think just a few days ago, if I'm not mistaken, a run of shows. You did you did like a little tour for Best of Beach Punk. How did those shows go? They were great, man. I, it's um. It was weird. We haven't really during like the COVID thing, not to bring it up straight away, but we didn't. We kind of went into like a hiatus kind of thing. Like we didn't really do anything, and it was in, it was like super intentional. We just like faded into the background. So obviously we haven't played since then. And we did a couple. We did like a run of shows in February. We did three shows, and then this time round we did was it seven or eight shows? So it was super surreal to be to be back at it and it but it was it was amazing to like be touring with the record because when, when whenever we've toured before we've not we've had singles out or like maybe an ep but i you know this is like our first tour with an album and we went to some places we've never been before we went to some cities that we love and yeah it was it was a great experience man oh that is awesome did you have i mean obviously it was a tour for best of beach punk but was mm-hmm. there like a defining record release show at all? Did you have like an official one? Or I mean, is that just kind of the whole tour was one? No, thing? yeah, we didn't. It was, um, we left before it came out. So we we played, the, the record came out on the 1st of April and the first show of the tour was the 29th of March. Oh, <laughs> so okay. I had to double check which month was which then. Um, so, so like we were selling it before it came out, which was, which was, which was kind of cool. But then we had a few people come up to us and be like, I've pre-ordered your record and here you are selling it before and after. I'm sorry. Um, but I think the London show felt like the release show um, to me personally. Nice, nice. Did you, uh, I mean, did you go out with like certain bands or did you kind of have different bands at each venue that you were playing? It was a different band kind of each night. Yeah, it was, um, I would love to have gone out with a with a particular like one band. I think that mm. would have been sick, like to have like a support band. But it, it just it was it was quite hard to like arrange that kind of thing. And and I think for, for the position we're in right now, like we wanted to we wanted to get the locals down. Um, yeah. If I'm being like completely transparent about it, like I think if we if we took a band that we liked, it it wouldn't have necessarily translated into people walking through the door. Do you know what I mean? No, that makes that definitely. I see what you're saying. And I mean, also, it's the beginning. You know what I mean? Like the album's just out. It's like you guys, you got time. You're like yeah. just warming up, obviously. Yeah. Well, we're trying to win. Like I said to the boys before we left, like this that tour was about the early adopters. Do you know what I mean? And, and it, you know, since we we the band started in 2017, but uh, like I think we're a brand new band, man. Like I don't see what we did before as you know. Like you also you've got to remember that we had like a year of nothing because covid so i think 2017 is quite an unfair like wet like way to say that we started i think right now we're a brand new band with our first record and like that's the way we're looking at it so you're completely right you know it's it's our first time with the record and you have to you know as much as we'd love to take two of our friends bands out you know it wasn't wasn't practical oh that makes no that makes sense did you i mean you guys have been around i didn't realize you've been around since uh 2017 Did you do a lot of touring pre-COVID? I mean, did you guys get much touring under your belt beforehand? We did bits. We did bits and bobs. We did, uh, we did like, when I was 17, yeah, so in 2018, I was 17 and we did uh, like five shows, four or five shows, and that was cool. We did like Brighton, London and Southampton, and that was like our first, we we called it a tour, but you know, it wasn't really. Um, And then in 2019, we, we put out a song called Picturesque which is on the record and oh. um, we toured that and that was like that was more official that was like with kind of friends that we'd met along the way who were like promoters and so I, i'd say that the best of beach punk tour that we just came off last week was the first tour 
but yeah, we, we played shows before. I, you know, I'd, I'd say we have toured before, but this was the first proper reminders tour. No, I mean you. I mean you. I feel like you guys have an excuse because you're right. You started 2017. You're a few yeah. years off, and I mean, you know, the pandemic and everything. It's very hard for a band to do a whole lot, anyway. So it, it's it's right. not fair. I feel like I feel like it's all right. Like, you, you know, you got a few years in there. It's like we're starting fresh. Which I mean, again, this is your debut record. You know, you yeah, got sure. stuff out there, but people may not know. You know, I'm including over here because you've never. Oh, I guess you've never. I was going to ask. You played the states. Obviously, you haven't. No, we haven't. No, I'd point. love to. I'd absolutely love to. But no. oh, I would love you to. We got to get you over here at some point. Yeah, yeah, you, absolutely. Did you guys get to play on this on this tour a good chunk of the record? I mean, I'm I'm assuming in that set list there you were able to play a good amount of the album live. Yeah, yeah. I think it's difficult because, like I was saying, like. Some people, some people do know some of the older tunes, you know, some of the 2017 tunes or whatever. <laughs> so we play one of those, a song called Purple Stripes, we we play, um, and oh god, I got to think, what do we play from the record? We play Victoria and Daisy and If You Want It, Don't Let Me Down and Carousel and Post Paris Blues. Uh, so that's five. So that's half of them. That's half the record. That is yeah. half the record. Um, jam after jam after jam. Yeah, that's the way I see it. Anyway, and then we play two new. Then we play two new songs. Oh, nice! Unreleased songs. Oh, Seaside Scampi, we play. Oh, again, again, we play. So we we basically play the whole. Yeah, you, you play just about the whole damn record. Yeah, we don't play Waiting on You. That's that's one that we don't play. Oh, okay, you didn't play that one. No, it's really it's like that's that's one of the songs that I recorded on my own during during COVID lockdown. So. And, and we just found it really hard to recreate it. We tried it, we jammed it, and it sounded fine. But it was, you know, I, we, we're kind of working. On it. Was, you know, I think some songs you you record, and then you tr you have to try and recreate the recording. And what's oh. kind of so great about that recording is like it's it's pretty messy and all over the place, and like it feels very live. And it was quite it's quite hard to like get that kind of almost controlled chaos. I know that that sounds a bit like pretentious, but do you know what I mean? No, it makes there's dynamics there too. There's a lot there's a lot going on where it may yeah. not. You can't bash it out like some of the other ones where it's like, oh, you can just kind of carousel. I could see where that just works live. Absolutely, like, yeah. Like something like that. It's like, okay, you can just get right into it. But yeah, yeah. There, there's other ones where I, I can get that. And also, like you just said, you played like nine out of ten songs. You, right. I, I feel like that's a good amount. That's yeah, amazing. I mean, what more do the people want, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone come up pissed after? Yeah, well, you, you didn't play the one song. Well, we do have one song called "If I Know You," which is like an old song. Uh, that's like a bit of like a, a hit, like back home on the on the Isle of Wight. Like nice. it's just our friends really like like really used to like love it. It's kind of the first song that like resonated with anybody. And like sometimes our friends will come and be like, "Well, is if I know you?" And we kind of have to be like, you know, I'm a fucking twenty one year old man now. I don't want to keep playing. That <laughs> that's so funny that like. Like, you know, we're talking, like, this is your debut record and, like, it's kind of your first tour, but, like, you already have those songs, like, you're obligated to play. The man, the man be there where it's like, we got it. Like, you have to have those in the set or something. The moms don't stop, if I'm being honest with you. They don't. But I, I think that's more like, I think it, people, and I, I don't know, I don't like saying this because I, I don't feel, like, entitled enough to have fans, but the people who I'd say are the Reminders fans, um, who are all fucking sick as hell, by the way, um, they you know they don't crave that song it's just people we know i think it's more like a, a nostalgic thing you know we played in brighton um and one of my friends came along uh and she was like you didn't play a final year and you know it's just, it's just it's a good song you know i start I, you know I'm, I'm super proud of i'm you know of course i'm proud of it but it's not like i uh, i'd much rather people were like begging for carousel or something like that <laughs> they will give it time they will they definitely yeah, will I, I, I hope so how long uh, after you guys started, after you formed, I mean, were you just writing songs right away from the get-go? Uh, yeah, the band was like, a, it was a, it's more of a vessel for the songs, like, as opposed to the other way around. Um, it was just like, I was writing like a bunch of songs, like I kind of always have, and I needed some some way of like showcasing them, I guess. And then the band was like, I mean, I was the thing is, I was making songs under the name Reminders before Reminders was a band. Oh, it was just like a, it was like a, it's just I basically just recorded some demos with a friend of mine knew how to knew gar knew how to use Garage Band when I was like super young, and so he would come around and we record demos, and we were like going through like the apps on his Mac, thinking like what would make a good band name, and then Reminders was the only one that sounded anything like a band name, so we went, so we rolled with that. 
And so that's why, like, it just kind of followed me around for all these all these years. So, band, yeah, so the songs like started the band, if you know what I mean. That's pretty. So did you then right away? I mean, did you kind of already have that? You knew what the band was going to sound like, or I mean, did that kind of morph as you were playing? I, I guess I don't know how fully realized the songs were before I you. They definitely changed. I think there was like a turning point where, like, the songs were my songs, and the band was my band, and. And like Harry and Theo would just play my songs. And then we booked some studio time um, to record Purple Stripes, excuse me, um, Indigestion. Um, and we record, we went to record it. And I remember like a, a week before we went to record it, we were in a rehearsal and Theo was like, well, if we're going to record this song, then we need to make it better. Um, and I remember being like, yeah, I mean, cool, like whatever. And, and, and then Harry and Theo like really, you know, we're like, well, this, and they kind of like produced it in a way, and it was really cool. And then since then, like, things evolved, and you know, they have a lot of input on, on how things go. And but it, you know, it has changed over time. But it always starts with the, kind of with like a song that I've that I've written, and then we kind of flesh it out together for sure. They put that touch on it. They put the you put the reminders touch on there. Yeah, they put their spin on it, man. And like, you know, they're fucking two very very talented guys, and. And they, you know, they don't pull any punches. You know, if they th if they think something's shit, then they tell me that shit. And if they think something's great, then you know they're the first to say. So it's like it's really cool. That's good. I feel like that's a hard thing in a band too to be able to have that. Like for someone to be able to tell you, go, hey, yeah, this song's shit. Or this isn't good. And also being able to take that criticism. Some, yeah. people, some people can on either way. Some people are like, I can't tell you that this song is awful. And then some people can't handle that hearing that their song. Yeah. Is yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes they're wrong. To be fair, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they, you know, they'll, they'll they'll be like bad mouthing a song that I've written, but um, it's a great song, and then I'll just have to tell them to, you know, shut the fuck up. And, like, <laughs> they're not always right. No, not, not always. <laughs> <laughs> Is this like your first, like, I mean, or like, I guess, real band? I mean, have you been any in any other bands prior to this? Um, I'm in. I play in a side project. Uh, I don't know if you know a band called Grade Two. Yeah. Oh my God, they're great. I just heard them a few months ago. They're fucking know, awesome. Right. Yeah. So they're really? from the Art of White as well, and they're, and they're they're like like some of my best friends. And so nice. I played a side project with with Jack from Grade Two, um, and our friend Toby. We we like Jack and I write a bunch together all the time, and so we just like start a side project. And so I do that, but nice. not not really. Other than that, but I'm it's, I'm psyched. You like you like Grade Two? That they're, they're fucking. They're I great just fans. they did that like. They did and not a re-release, but they did like the acoustic versions. Yeah, I mean, I mixed that record. Holy fuck, dude, that's how I found them. I just randomly heard that like late last year, whenever it came <laughs> out, right? It came out like late last year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. At the end of it, I got it. I'm like, and then it was crazy because then I hear them electric and I'm like, oh my God. Mm, I wasn't yeah, expecting it because the first thing I hear is them acoustic like that. Yeah, yeah, right. That's oh, mad. It's more, such a small world. That is so good. Yeah, I've been I've been talking them up a lot. Yeah, we play them on the radio show. They're fucking great. I've yeah, been they're a great band, man. They're um they've just landed in LA uh yesterday to start their, their next record. Oh no, oh okay. So I was about to ask if they were working on new music at all. Yeah, I don't know if I was supposed to say that. So. Oh. oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no more, say no more. That's all I can say. But yeah, that it's gonna be great. I've heard the demos. Yeah, it's gonna it's, oh mate, it's gonna be an unbelievable album for sure. Very nice, very nice. Are you like for you with songwriting, you know, kind of getting back to like obviously you wrote these songs, start reminders. Mm. Are you someone do you I always like asking this with people, are you like constantly writing music? Are you one of those people where like it will hit you and you'll just write like a shit ton for like, I don't know, a month or two, and then all of a sudden it's like you just you won't write, you know, like creativity or whatever, it will hit you in spurts, but you might not write again for like months. Like, which are you on that spectrum? Oh man. It definitely like it changes all the time. I think it's something I'm trying to work on as like I don't want to be somebody who has to be struck or overcome with some kind of emotion to write a song. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't want to have to be in like a place of euphoric happiness or like deep dark depression. I, I don't want yeah. I don't want that to be like I want to be able to sit down and be like, I'm gonna write a song today. And you know, and it's that's I'm trying to work on it, but I, you know, I do find that hard. I think it depends, man. When I was younger, I'd write like when I was younger, I'd sit down and I'd take an hour and I'd write a song and I'd start with the verse and then I'd write the chorus, then I'd write the second verse, then I'd write the bridge. So as you heard it, that was how it's written. Every time that fell. And oh. now it's now it's like super different. Like now, you know, now I might just have I might just sit on a verse for like two months and be like, I don't have the chorus yet. And then I'd like 
try and write a chorus and it might not be right and I'll come back to it. And that, there's something about that that I really like. It's kind of like letting it take, like it just kind of happens. It just kind of like, there's kind of more like long form way of writing is I guess the way I'd describe it. But that, you know, that's kind of new to me and, it, and it's not something I decided I was going to do. It just kind of became the, the way I, I started to write. But I think it's weird. I went through like a, like a pretty rough patch in like in the summer, like I had like a breakup or whatever. And I was like not writing any songs about it. I guess I didn't want to. And then I wrote one really good one. And then I never wrote about it again. And I, that was, that was different because normally it's either like, I don't write about it or I write loads about it. And then I just wrote this one song and I almost feel like I, I kind of said everything I needed or wanted to say in the one song. So I, I didn't need to do it again. That's interesting. That is really, some people go the other way and they'll take like one thing and write 50 songs about like, yeah, like Olivia people. Rodrigo style, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you don't do that. You're not doing that. Well, I wish I, I mean, I wish I, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what it was. I think I definitely like shied away from writing back. Cause I didn't want to think about it. And I was like, you know, that makes maybe. Sense. and then, and then I, you know, I did. Um, and it was, it, it helped a lot, but it's just this one song. I think, I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't know why that happened, but I'm really proud of this, of this one song. And like, but the, the point is, is that you just, you don't know. And it's like, I, I was thinking earlier, Noel Gallagher said that like the best songs just like fall out of the sky. Like you don't have to think about them. You just hear them. Right. Yeah. And I think that, that's very true. And, but then he also says about songwriting that like, it's like going fishing. Right. So, you know, you just, you have to sit at the lake and throw your fucking rod in and see what you get. And, you know, some days you won't that's get anything. Great way and, to put it. Oh mate, I wish it was mine. It was not, I guess. I can't take credit. But yeah, it's so true. Like you, you, but you just have to be there at the lake with your fishing rod. Like try, you have to be there with your guitar trying to do something. And some days it doesn't come and that's fine. And then other days, you know, you write your best song. So have you have you gotten into it all? I mean, I know a lot of people who like try to get into that where they write more, where it's like you just try to almost force yourself to write something every day. And again, if it's shit, it's shit. But mm. maybe there's something good in there. I mean, have you have you done any of that where you just try to write like every day? Yeah, man, it, it's you're so right. Like, it's almost like you know, people say, and I really b believe this. Like, no questions is a stupid question, and like, no idea is a bad idea. And I have like, when I'm like writing with other people, or like, you know, sometimes I record and produce, and like, like I said, like I mix and stuff. And I always say to everybody, like I'm working with, whether it's my band or someone else's band, or I'm writing with other, or whatever it is, I always say like every idea i have i'm going to suggest it like whether it, you think it's stupid or it's cringy or cheesy or it's just stupid or just bad like if the idea comes it's like worth saying it because you never know what it's gonna come into and um that's like that's something that i guess probably loads of people to say that but that's something that i kind of like discovered myself like i used to be super insecure and be like i'm not going to suggest that because it's a bit cringy but then you then you actually do suggest it and it becomes the chorus or something really important and i think like there's been a there's been a bunch of times that like I, I I've started writing something or uh or or like I've written like a pretty mediocre song but there's one lyric and it's like that lyric's cool. I think like post past blues is a really good example. Like when I first wrote that song, uh it was like the most generic cliche. Like I I just thought it wasn't good. I was like this same with Carousel actually. I remember writing Carousel and being like this isn't like this doesn't have a good hook. Like this isn't very catchy and. And I wrote it and I was just kind of like, I, I sent it to Theo and he, he was like, yeah, it's all right. And then we, I never thought about it again. And I, I can't, after writing that song, I kind of remember writing it and feeling like a bit embarrassed. I don't remember why. I was just kind of like, oh, this isn't what I want to be doing. Like, I don't like this, which is which is so bizarre now because, you know, I really love that song. And now, I, you know, I hear that chorus and I think, oh, I wonder whether I can write a chorus like that again. <laughs> so it's, I don't know, it's, it's such a bizarre thing. And they do take on a life of their own. And it kind of like, the minute you finish writing a song, you know, what's so amazing about it is that you start off with nothing. And even if it's shit or fucking whatever it is, if, even if it's like ends up being bad, it's almost, it's always worthwhile because you start with nothing and you, you, you finish with something like productive, you know? Yeah. You have a product. Like at the end of the day, you still have a song, you know, yeah. every song also can't be a masterpiece. There's also, I'm sure there's that too, where you have to almost learn that where it's like, not every song is going to be your best song. That doesn't mean it's bad. Like there are songs that are shit. There's also songs that exist that are like, maybe this is my best one. Maybe not every song hits this way, but it's still good. No, I think, yeah, I, I don't know. Is, is, is there like, is there, I don't know if there is a best song, you know, because they're all all good for different reasons. Yeah, at least, That's true like, too. You know, I think that's the way I like to think of it anyway, because 
it depends what you're, you know, how do you define good? You, you can't do it. And somebody would take something different from every song. And so um, I think that's really important as well. I like it. I, I write loads of like, di like I write different types of songs all the time, you know, like, like acoustic -y ones, like there's like a slower one on the record. And I write songs like that all the time. And I think you just have to, you know, whatever, whatever it is you did write, you have to embrace it, you know? Yeah. Do you, does like everything you write, you think kind of fit under reminders or like you writing different things, you kind of have to go, this would work as a reminder song. Or do you kind of go like, or I guess also, I mean, maybe try to work it into one or can you kind of tell, go, well, this is probably something else. This is, this is something that probably isn't going to fit under the reminders. You know? oh, it's really tough, man. It's a, it's a great question. Um, like, I think like I could probably put anything under the reminders kind of banner and because, you know, because it's me who's written it and me singing it and it would probably work, but there's, you know, there's some songs that I write and I've like, I'm saving for something else, not because they're better or like, I'm not, you know, I don't want to pull any punches for reminders, but there's, there's some songs I write and I'm like, that's not quite right. Like it could work and we could put it out, but like, that's going to be something better for something else. And I think like, I'm super like, like creative in the sense that like, I have, like I have a list of band names on my phone and album titles and like, and I have this whole other band kind of made up in my head, like ready to go, uh, which, which I'm like super, and I don't know whether it will ever happen or not. And, you know, but I think that's like, it's, but that's also really healthy. And that's what's really, that's what's really good about, you know, going back to uh, the side project I did with Jack. Um, like it was, it was, I thought, well, I found it super healthy and I think he did too, because we were writing a bunch of songs over lockdown and stuff that, we didn't almost didn't have a use for um but then by starting this new project it's like it almost like you have reminders and then we have our, our side project with jack is called transatlantics and then you have something else over here and it's like if you can like kind of compartmentalize these songs it doesn't feel like when you write something it might not be right for reminders or grade two or whatever it is it's it's not wasted and it's almost like you're charging up your reminders or your grade two battery and you can just come back to it. And it's, you know, and you're learning about songwriting and you're coming up with new lyrics and new ideas that you can then apply to it later. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well also with that, like I think outlets having outlets like that are good. I've had this discussion with musicians where sometimes if you don't have those outlets, it will bleed into your main band. And sometimes mm. that's bad because mm. you're, you're still obviously the creative part of you is writing songs that yeah, maybe don't fit under that umbrella but you still want to get them out there. So a mm -hmm. lot of times I think that is how bands can like screw up their sound or compromise things where it's like, I think it's healthy to have those other avenues where you can go, this works for this, this works for this. Not just, I'm just going to throw everything, everything at this one thing. Yeah. Like that totally. I, I feel like, I feel like most people should probably have some kind of side project just to oh. get those there's certain ideas that are still good. Doesn't mean they're not good, but they right. may not work well for what you're doing in that main band. Like you're saying. No, I completely agree, man. I couldn't agree more. Like, yeah, it's so healthy. And like you say, when, and that's like, things can easily like sour, right? So like, if I was started, you know, let's say I didn't do any, like I didn't do a side project and I didn't write with other people or whatever it was. And I started like, like, for example, like I, I love Vibra Slap, right? The, you know, the percussion, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I think it sounds so sick. I love it. And like, I've put it on a bunch of other records I've been on now. Like, like nice. yeah, like the stuff I've produced and like this record we're doing, like me, Jack and Toby, got the transatlantic record, like it's all over that. And I think if I hadn't like kind of got that out of my system, there could easily be virus lab on reminders now. And like, maybe it wouldn't have worked. And like, it could have, like, maybe it would cause like a discrepancy in the band and, and the, and the yeah. boys would be like, what? Like we don't want virus lab, but you're so right. Like you need to get these things out of your system. And once you've done it, like then you can, it almost like, gives you like laser sharp focus on what will work for something else do you know what i mean oh no that like again it totally does because there's and look at like a band can change their sound but there are bands where you can tell like one guy in the band got really into the beatles before this mm -hmm. came out or someone got like into synthesizers or something like you're talking about where it's like you're getting into other instruments and it's like maybe it works but maybe this guy just got really into something and is putting it somewhere where it shouldn't yeah yeah right. yeah 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 that's why, yeah, again, I'm I'm pro, I think everyone should have, the more I talk to, to like people in bands, I think the more people should have side projects because it does, it keeps you, it also keeps that, you know, that other part where, again, you might be writing songs don't fit for the band and then that might become resentment in a way of like, I have these things I want to do, but yeah. I can't get them out in here. It's like, 
that's just again you gotta you gotta get it out in other ways so i i totally I, I think it keeps things pure i've talked to people where i go like if you like do you think if your band hadn't broken up and you started like this solo project or something it sounds nothing like their band that it would have bled into the band itself and they're like yeah probably it probably yeah. would have been awful we would have we would have alienated had we not broken up and i went and did this elsewhere which i mean a side project would have worked before yeah. breaking up like you just you'd, you'd alienate they like even he knew it's so like you would you would just alienate our fan base it would have been something so different from what we originally did and yeah. it's like if you just had those other avenues to get this stuff out originally maybe you would have broken up you know there's yeah, always also like like a side project is, is like there's no pressure like there's not and i think that's like it really reminds well i think with with the transatlantic band it really like for me at least and i think for jack as well like we we would go and we'd spend like a weekend at toby's house and he like he has this like sick flat and so we'd all stay there and we just like write songs and record all weekend and it was like it was just for fun and like it kind of reminds you that like it's the most and I don't want to get too cheesy about how much like I love songwriting, but like it's like it's such an amazing like one amazing like it's, I feel like I genuinely feel like it's such a privilege to be able to do it. And then when you have two like minded people to do it with, and when you just go and instead of like going and playing football or going and like whatever, like our fun away from our bands is just writing more music, and it kind of resets you. It gives you that almost like purity back. It's like oh, I remember why I love it, and like, this feels good, and this is fun. And then if you can apply that kind of energy to where the pressure might be, whether that's like whatever, you know, your main project, then I don't know. It's like a nice kind of like breath of fresh air and like it's sobering. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, no, totally. Totally. And yeah. I mean, outside of that, too, I mean, do you have any other creative outlets like to get like besides outside of music and like, you know, I also say you do like mixing and stuff. Is yeah. that like where all your creative energy goes or do you have do you have like any other way? That you uh you know kind of take that creative energy out of you no, not really like i i can like i can't draw or like do art um yeah like i i always say like i don't even really have any hobbies like i don't really i like watching football or like soccer um and like i'm a southampton fan and that's cool but like i don't I don't know like i don't really do anything else like i'm not i don't really like anything else like as, as cr creatively as well like like i don't know uh, yeah no the answer is no music music baby all, yeah, music. all yeah. music all the time yeah yeah it's which is like it's like i guess i'm quite like an all or nothing kind of person so maybe that's why there's nothing wrong with that there's a lot of i always like hearing that some people use other avenues some it's like it's all it's all music and mm -hmm. again that's not bad it's not a it's like, a powerful thing. like all of my favorite like like it's funny you said actually and i guess i've literally just realized this this second but <laughs> all of my favorite kind of like all the people i idolize like like the tim armstrongs and the billy joe armstrongs and like there's a guy there's a band over here i don't know how big they are to say but they're called the vaccines i've heard of um, them yeah they're like they're like a london band like a guy called justin young from that band i really like admire and that they're they're always making records like they're the type of people who like whether rancid were, were as big as they are whether green they were as big you know they'd be making records regardless yeah. and like their one aim is to like m just have fun making music and i think they're always doing that you know whether they're doing a green album or a rancid album or whatever it is like you know tim armstrong is producing and writing with everybody he's got a oh, solo right. record you know and i think i find that like super inspiring and i think i really relate to that because it's like you know the amount of side projects that green they have and do you know what i mean like they're always they oh, just want to make music like, and I, I, I love that and i think you know I'm, I'm very i think i'm very similar in nature to that because i that's what i want to do and also i find that super inspiring that's like it's really not about the six the, the level of merit or success for them it's just about like having fun making music and making good records and i think as i've gone older that has become like my sole aim as well like i just want to have fun making music and make some records that i'm really proud of and then everything anything above that is like a, like chatting to you today it's like it's just a bonus it's just cool nice no, yeah and i mean both of those are i mean you know like really there is that uh you can tell their love for me even this far in you can tell mm -hmm. like they're not jaded there's not this like it's a paycheck it's like they really and i forget how much tim armstrong like the producing and writing he does where it's like even if you're not listening to a rancid record that dude probably had or maybe it's on hellcat records like that too it's like the dude obviously loves music and yeah, like yeah. 
yeah, he lives and breathes it, man. And I, have you heard his solo record? Recently? Did you put no, it recently? No, it's, it's like, it's like for maybe like, it's probably nearly 20 years old now. Yes. I, okay. Yeah. If you're talking about that, it's like a black cover, I think. 2007. It's called A Poet's Life. Yeah. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. Great record. Great record. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, for a yeah. second, I thought he had a new one. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I miss oh, I wish. I wish. Maybe we'll get maybe we'll get one at some point. Oh, mate, if you did a sequel to that album, I think I'd like cry. I love that album. I love it. Do that, and then we'll get maybe we'll get like the year of then an Op Ivy reunion. I, no, I well, did you see the Op Ivy kind of like reunion? Oh, Jesse yesterday? Michaels. Yeah, that was that was pretty neat. I will if you're gonna get anything like if, if, even if that's as close as we get. Yeah, I'll take that. That was pretty. Oh, mate, neat. It was badass. It was fucking badass. I love oh, I love Op Ivy as well. Oh, they're one of the great. I mean, like the greatest Scott man of all time. One of the greatest. Oh, but just whatever they're one of the greatest of all time the Scott Punk Kings, that's, what they're <laughs> that's the best way to put it just want to take a quick second to thank this episode's sponsor treehouse if you are ready to launch your new career in coding treehouse has one of the best and most affordable online classes for you at treehouse they've rethought the learning process and built a proven system to get you the skills and knowledge you need to achieve your goals when you're done with a course, you haven't just watched a video, you have learned, practiced, and absorbed a concept. You can choose to build a portfolio, create a network, land your dream job with their boot camp style tech degree program, land a development job this year, whatever your goal may be, they will get you there. So start your free seven-day trial today at teamtreehouse.com. Let's get in to I me, mean, best of beach punk a little more. Like how long ago was this recorded? I mean, were you were you recording this recently, or is this something that you recorded a while back and it's been you know what I mean it's been sat on for a little bit till it came out? Uh, yeah, it's a mixture of 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 the two. Uh, let me think. What's the? I think the song that we the song the song we first recorded was Post Paris Blues, one hundred percent. That was recorded. Oh man, February twenty nine. No, twenty nineteen at some point, not February. Oh. Maybe. Well, no, because it came out, that song first came out in May 2019. So, yeah, February 2019 sounds about right. Yee, oh, wow, man. Mm. Well, I, would have, I was only 18. Oh, my God. Mm, which is crazy to think. Um, so that was, that's the oldest one. That's not me like, oh, I'm only 18. Look how cool I am. That's like just crazy. I was like, feel, it doesn't feel like that long ago. Um, and then the most recent ones I did. So in in covid lockdown i recorded daisy waiting on you victoria and between now and 6 30 so they basically did b-side yeah the very yeah you wrote like the second half of that record kind of all yeah, right and, and i just did them like I, I didn't know whether they were gonna be reminder songs and i didn't know whether they were just demos but a friend of mine uh plays in a band over here called coach party who would like smash it and he has he has a studio and so it was like covid lockdown it was that summer and i was kind of i just gave a message it was like like let's just fucking make, make some noise and see what happens. I've got, I've got some songs. Um, so we recorded them together. It's called guy, absolute legend. Um, so yeah, we did all of those together. We did Daisy and waiting on you in one, in one day. And then we did Victoria and between now and six thirty on another day. So it's just two wow. days. Yeah. We smashed them out, man. Oh, and he's playing drums and I'm on bass and guitar. And I kind of sent them to, to the guys and, and they just, they really liked them. And I think we would have loved to have re-recorded them um, with like as reminders, but I think we did kind of come to the cl conclusion that like, like, no, this works. Like this sounds That's good. Right. And it's like, good. how much would we change? And it was like, well, not a lot. And like, to be fair to them, like play, since we've been touring them and like, like Theo's like improved my bass lines. You're like, we'll be playing Victoria and he adds like a little like thing. And I'm like, oh, I wish that was on the record. And you know, same with Harry, but um, so they, that was, that was a uh, May or June, 2020. So that was, those were the most recent ones. And then Seaside Scampion again, again, we did COVID lockdown number one, like, so like so two years ago, basically, I guess almost like to the day, probably. Um, we just did them all at home, like on our own and then got them mixed. So, yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, this wasn't like a, it definitely doesn't sound, this was an album where it's like you went into like one studio for like no. a week and did it. It was kind of all spread out. No, it's like, it's not... I, it's an album to me now, but it wasn't like that's kind of why it's best of be like because it feels like a bit like it's not a compilation, but it feels like to me it's a bit of a compilation, and so that's kind of why the title's like the way it is because it's because it wasn't like a it's not like a project it's not like a and I wrote this on our on our 
social media on our Instagram. It's like, it's not supposed to be like this like crazy piece of art. Like it's not supposed to be like the debut album that blows people's minds. Like it's just 10 songs that I wrote that we glued together. And I, we, like we kind of put them all together, like, cause we wanted, like we wanted, a, we needed another label to put us out. Cause, um, cause yeah, we, we were like shopping the record around to labels and stuff. And we, we we basically knew that if we wanted to get signed, we needed an album. So I was like, I just said, you know, I'm gonna put all, I'm gonna put the best songs that we have in the SoundCloud playlist and send, see what labels think. And they liked it, so we were like, yeah, cool, this will work. And that was it. That is all. I mean, and to your credit too, in two ways. I mean, for one, I would never know that that it wasn't just reminders on those last songs. Like that, it all flows. You can't tell it's different people playing on it. And then also, um like like with that it's sequenced very well like if i didn't if i didn't know like you telling me they're all re- like released different times and written Ooh. different times it does feel pretty fully realized like i wouldn't be surprised if you're like yeah we wrote this in a certain amount of time and it was like i wanted it sequenced this way and i i i visioned the songs in this in this no, yeah which is weird because like it's interesting. I think basically, I think during COVID, there was like almost like a certain level of apathy about it. Like, I remember kind of thinking, like, oh, we'll just see if labors are interested and in like that. Like, we'll just see what happens. And I, like, now I'm quite like a sequencer. Like, now uh, the second album that we're writing or, or whatever, like, nice. Like, I've got it sequenced in my phone already, but like, I'm probably going to write 10 more, 20 more songs for it. And like, the ones that are in the sequence at the moment probably won't even make the record. So, so what I mean is like, you're right. Like it was like, it's like an apathetic kind of like sequence. Like, although like, thank you. And I agree that it, that it flows quite well, but it's kind of crazy that I was just like, so like, yeah, okay, here it is, whatever. And it's just front loaded with like, what was going to be the singles, like post pass booze, carousel, if you want it picturesque, like they were just in my mind, the singles. And I, that's what like, you've kind of reminded me, I put all the singles in the front end because I was like, if we're going to get labels attention or whatever, like they're going to want to hear the best. So I was just like, we'll put all them. And then, so, but I think it works. And, you know, I think people, I think people like it. So front loaded with the hits. Yeah. The hits right away. Hit, 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 hit. Which I like as well. And I, you know, I listened to the regrets. They put on that new album, um, which is really good. Actually, it's really popular. It's really good. And the, I think the first three or four songs on that are singles. And I said to my friend the other day, we were listening to it together. And I was like, I love that, like front loaded, like with the singles. I don't know. I think it's kind of it's something that, like, I oh, guess I can yeah. stumble across. But it's, I think it's really cool. No, I think it. I think it works really well. It works for the album. You just made me think of something, so I got to ask you, like, because obviously, like, you were talking about, like, you, like, even in your phone, like, writing band names before they've happened. You get album titles in your head. Um, you know, even sequencing a record and stuff. Mm. It, it makes me wonder, like, are you someone who ever writes song? Like, do you ever start off with a title? and write from a title have you ever done that because you make me the way you're explaining this makes me think you might write in that way sometimes yeah man so i wrote this song called let's go tokyo um which i love i absolutely love it and it's one of these ones that i'm that i think i'm saving for like this band that i've got in my head but nice. yeah basically there's a i just I, my friend who i was talking about earlier who i like recorded the very first reminders demos with like when i was like 14 or whatever um you know the guy I was saying who had garage band. We I used to say let's go Tokyo but before we did a take. I used to go let's go Tokyo like that. Like it was just like we just thought it was funny. Like it was like a goofy thing. And I remember in COVID lockdown, um, like I, I was living with my girlfriend at the time, and like di- like somebody had made dinner. Like one of us had made dinner, and I was like, All right, let's go Tokyo like that. And I remember thinking that would be a really cool name for a song. And then I wrote a song, which is like which I really like. Um, just around that so yeah all the time and i'm always writing stuff down or like there's one at the moment which i ah oh, fuck what is it i'm gonna forget what it is now but there's a word ah oh, fuck what is it <laughs> there's a word anyway that like i'm i really want to write a song about and like picturesque is one there's a there's an arctic monkeys song with picturesque in it oh is written it? Arctic Monkeys song yeah 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 i forget which song it is but it's got picturesque in it and i was, I was listening to it and my mum said like you don't hear many songs with picturesque in the t- in like in it like like a word like that she was like it's quite like a, a like a, like an odd word like it's cool that he wrote that in a song and i remember thinking yeah that is cool and so that was like the picturesque wasn't written like i didn't i didn't know when i started writing it that it was gonna be called that but then i was like oh that'd be cool and so yeah like it's just it's pretty organic but yeah 
That's interesting. Yeah, some people can do it. And I always think that's cool to like start off with a title and then just almost, I don't know, influence yourself just with that. I mean, it almost goes like with you were talking about earlier, like, you know, wanting to be able to write all the time and not just write when you're in a certain mode or mood. Like, I feel like, like that's almost a way to do it. Like, if you can at least make yourself, I don't know, like do some shit like that. Like, I, I feel like you can get better at like just being able to write. Like with doing shit like that where it's like, I'm going to make myself write a song off yeah. of the title. Because that yeah. is quite a skill, I would say. I mean, that's... Well, I think if you can do it, like, a title can be, like... I think what's cool about title is, like, you immediately have, like, a sense of direction. Like, you... It's like, it, like, if you have a title, you you know, like... It has to... You just have, like, yeah, like I said, like, a sense of direction. But I think, like, it's it's definitely a skill but and sometimes it, it i think when it goes well it feels amazing and then when it when it doesn't go well like you feel like the fucking biggest doofus on the planet like <laughs> and, and like that let's go tokyo song is like an example of it going obviously you haven't heard it but um but it's like an ex- example of it going like to see it like really well um and yeah i don't know i'm trying to think of it, if there's any others on on the record um i don't think there is on the on the on the remind track but i think titles are super important um, I think like when you look at that, like if you're in a record store and you turn over an album and, and like if the titles have like if there's cool song names, I don't know, I think that's like super important. There is something about that. It's just I mean, it's kind of like the thing of going. I love going to record stores and finding things where just even the record, the the actual cover looks cool. Like you just like the artwork and you do this part of that where you go like, oh, wow, that's a like song titles really will grab you. Even if yeah. you've never heard a song from the band, you just go, wow, what's that? Like yeah, that. that's like when when I first listen to an album, I'm like, I try, I always try and listen to them front to back. But like, like nine times out of ten, if I'm not feeling it by like the fourth track, I'll be like, okay, what like what sounds cool, and I'll, and I'll click that. There, it's funny that you you would almost think that it's not like that important, but it really is. You're like what you're saying is like I've I've definitely done that myself. Well, it's like the blurb of a book, you know. Yeah, like yeah. Just, good point. And read the blurb. It's like it's almost like the equivalent of that. There's a lot of pressure in a title when you think about it. It's only a couple of words, and it's like it can it can really that's like someone's first impression if they haven't heard the song yet. Mm, yeah, impression. yeah, yeah. It's like super important. I think like although I do like as you probably noticed from our album, I like people's names as titles. I think that's like that is that's just, like it's so classic. You just can't. I think that's like so enticing because it's somebody's name. And it's like what did they do? Who are they? What's the story behind this person? Oh, names in a names in a song. I think name checking people in a song or in a in a title. It, mm. something about it makes you remember it i feel i feel like it makes you remember a song more There's i think something. it's like i don't know like i think i always think of allison by elvis costello it's one of my favorite songs oh yeah it's like i don't know it's like you feel like you know allison in like a weird way i don't know it makes yeah, it so it personal. it makes it personal yeah including if you know someone by that name or shit you know mm. what i mean you start connecting it it just mm. does it makes it more like oh he wrote that for me that kind of thing where you can hear it and Mm-hmm. You feel like they wrote it for you, kind of thing. Although I don't know anybody called Daisy, so oh. <laughs> yeah. good to know that. Good to know that. Yeah, a bit trivia. For, for uh, on Best of Beach Punk, I wanted to ask too, like for songs, were there any that were just like when you were recording these that were just a pain in the ass for one reason or another to just get down? Was there like I don't know, like one or two songs on this? Like maybe the other ones were smoother, but it's like something about it. Maybe not, not even difficult, but maybe just a part that was like to successfully get that down was just a big old pain in the ass. <laughs> um, that's a really funny question. I like that a lot. Um, I remember in Carousel, there's like in the bridge, it goes, you know, it goes. Wee, wee, wee. I love that fucking guitar yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah. It's so unique. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, I couldn't play it. I knew I was singing that in the studio. I remember like singing it and being like, I want it to sound like this. And I was going. Wee, wee, wee. And the guys who were, like engineering us um i was like come on you play it and they're like no we're not playing it like we don't know how to like play and so theo ended up playing it and i but he just nobody knew what i meant for the longest time and i was like wee, wee, wee. and i played like a few references and everyone was like no and i think the technical term is a double stop i think that's what it's called um you look like you play guitar is that what it's called i think that's what it's called yeah, yeah. I, I don't, by the way that's because the guitars are behind you not because i'm like <laughs> got those um, there actually yeah no it looks cool um but yeah like wee, wee, wee. anyway so that was like that stands out um no but the recording it was pretty so i think post pass blues like we knew exactly what we were going to do like we demoed that one like twice like very thoroughly so we knew what we were doing with that that's pretty straightforward um picturesque yeah it's like 
like we just played it how we played it live carousel yeah and then yeah no it's pretty straightforward to be fair i think in um between now and 6 30 i played it free time like that we did we didn't have like a metronome and i remember like i played it and then i and then i we decided afterwards that we wanted to add drums me and guy and then he went in to drum on it and it was like super hard because obviously i was playing free time and so he was like trying to like play in time to nothing and it sounded really bad in the room and then he edited them and like somehow made it sound i don't know how he did it it's like he's like a he's like a superhuman he's so talented and, and he he made it like make sense so that was like one thing i was worried about but i think it, it worked out but no like for the most part no we were all good but it's a good it's a great question yes <laughs> what song changed most from the demo would you say from like your original i you know like the original idea and stuff for the song what one changed the most to when oh, it post palace blues 100 percent. carousel is like exactly the same as the original demo other than the uh, other than the stabs the dun, 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 we added that um but post palace blue is like like i say like when i first wrote that song it was like yeah it like didn't sound it, like it was it was i like it was just i just thought it was a bad song for like for a while until we figured it out and now it's one of my favorites but yeah that one like yeah took like it changed massively but for the better definitely it's like yeah that one for sure nice nice i'm sure like influences from the three of you all change everyone has obviously different tastes but i mean what are some what would you say are some commonalities what are a few influences like the three of you all share like what are your common grounds musically uh well green day is like the biggest one nice nice like yeah like i just absolutely adore the green day and so does our bass player theo and like our friendship is like entirely based on on green day which is kind of funny so he he's my brother's like closest friend from from school and um so i've known him forever like i've probably known him like i don't know like 16 years or something like silly and he came around one summer summer 2013 and green day were headlining reading festival and it was on the tv so i was watching it and he came in he was like like who's this this is sick and i told him green day and then we kind of like became super tight because of that and he played guitar and he taught me how to play guitar which is kind of crazy nice. uh yeah so it's like a super weird so green day is like a big one we also love rancid it's kind of weird like me and theo like have like a lot of similar tastes and then so and so did, it's it's really bizarre so me and theo like like more classic punk like reminds green day rancid and then oh. me and harry really like emo like midwest emo like modern baseball hot mulligan uh, bands like that um and then harry and theo also like hip-hop a lot like harry and theo love mac miller um and people like that and i'm not i don't so we like kind of all like, if there's like a venn diagram there's like we there's like a we all cross over um but we're all so different as well which is like really cool theo like theo likes a bit of everything i'm more classic like guitar music and harry's like mostly hip-hop these days which is cool like it brings a different like a different flavor for sure Oh, yeah. I mean, that's where it comes from. Like you were talking about earlier, you write the songs and they kind of put that you all put that reminders touch on it. I mean, it all kind of comes from your differences, I would say. Mm -hmm. If all of you're listening to the same thing, you may lose some of the you know, what I mean, you might lose some of the things that make the songs sound like the remind, you know, sound like reminders. Yeah, man. I I'd hate to sound like too much of a Green Day cover band. We're pretty close already. We're dangerously close already. So that bit, you know, I, not straight up, but that bass tone, I really like because the bass at times reminds me of some Mike Dirt shit. So well, it, mate, I mean, there's no higher compliment than that in my. Oh, opinion. I mean it with, I mean, yeah, one of the best punk bass players, and I mean, obviously, we got Matt Freeman. We're talking rancid. I know, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a close race for sure. But Mike Dunn was definitely the reference, and you know, Theo's a massive um, uh, Blink fan as well. Uh, nice, I should, I should, I should say the, the um the older stuff. You know, I should, I should. You know, I like that even more. I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're not out here listening to Matt Skiba. We're not doing it. <laughs> oh, my God. I love this. I love this already. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. We, we like our country. Right? But anyway, yeah. so like like the post palace blues baseline, I, I think it's more of like a blink skate punk baseline than it is like a Green Day. I don't know. It's, it's all like we're all over the place, man. But I think, you know, we want to sound like we want to sound like Californian, nine, 90s Californian punk with 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 like with with like our britishness you know in the lyrics you can write a catchy ass song that's what i like is like it's there and i hear your influences and like what you're talking about like 90s punk and shit but it's also catchy it sounds good and it's catchy like it can work it can work where like i think if you're into that stuff which i am i fucking love 90s skate punk and all that stuff but even if you're not 
I think someone could get into this. That's what I, I feel like you have that accessibility with it where like people, people can get what you're doing, like who like that stuff. But also, even if you have no clue, which you should, but like, if you're not fucking cool and know how great Rancid and Green Day, all it is, I feel like someone could get into you guys and then find all that cool shit. Well, I hope so. And I'm glad you said that. Cause like, so go on. No, no, I was just going to say, you guys would be a good gateway in that way, where I think you could really, you maybe you're the one who turns people onto that shit. Maybe you get some kids and younger people into the fucking gods. Go, you like us? Wow. Shit. <laughs> that would be amazing, man, because I think, like, so I'm into, like, so many bands. I think this is, like, like such a great way of getting into music. Like, you get into a band, like, let's say Green Day, and then you, you find out that, like, they love Ramones and The Replacements. And, like, I found so many great bands from my favorite bands influences if you know if you kind of know what i mean that's how i find all i mean you you got to know your roots of things if you like this band figure out what bands they liked you're probably going to like them more than you know i listen to like fucking desmond decker now because you know because of that tim armstrong record and you know and i think like that's like such an amazing thing and if i could be you know if somebody hears us and then goes oh what's that sound you know, the same way that I did when I heard Green Day or whatever, like, you know, I don't think you get much higher. It feels like that. I don't know. That would be like, I don't know. That would be, I could die happy. I'll put it that way. Well, hopefully you can. Hopefully. Uh, I th- I think it'll happen off this record again. The record I've, I've, uh, I've loved the thing. It is really, really damn good. And I think, uh, you know, and it's fresh too. You guys just put it out. It's just out the gate. So you, know, you got the whole year to kind of get, Get the world on the reminders bus. We're gonna get everyone on the fucking on the on the fan train. Everyone become a reminders fan. Oh, I hope so. I mean, I hope people like it. And thank you so much for your kind words, man. Because you know, it's it's like as much as I was saying, like it's not supposed to be like an album. Like it, it is our debut album, and like it's super personal as well. You know, like so, like to me, you know, it's all like super personal songs, and they're all like super raw and real, and you know, like. Even Daisy, you know, it's like a popular song. Like it's a super like emotional song, and I don't know the whole thing. Like the fact that it's out is like I feel very vulnerable. I feel pretty naked about it. So the fact that people like like it and are buying it and streaming it and coming to the shows and ah oh, man, it's it's surreal. You know, on on any level, it's surreal. But I feel like you know, I definitely want to take it like as far as it can go. You know, I want to I want to keep pushing it. And if if there's people who want to jump on the reminders train, then feel free. Jump on this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> well for uh you know the record's out now again everyone should go check it out what can we expect from you the rest of the year what are you going to be doing with the band the rest of 2022 oh it's good i can't believe it's 2022 that's crazy um <laughs> with the 2022 we have we do have some plans um we'd love to come over to the u.s we'd absolutely love we to want you we want you here I'd, i mean we're gonna try that it's in the pipeline we have we, you know we're in talks about it we're just trying to do it as you know it's the best way possible for everybody um we're obviously the records just dropped um we're gonna just be pushing that we're gonna be playing some festivals in the uk this summer um and yeah maybe some new music videos and content but i think the most important thing is we're gonna tr- we want to play in front of as many people as possible and shout about our record in front of as many people as possible um and you know just hit as many cities and you know anyone who will have us um yeah and just like like i said earlier like we're all about finding the early adopters the people you know like you who like who, who have like very kindly and like graciously like kind of taken the band under your wing and you know we you know we're so grateful for that and those those are the people we're trying to track down nice nice are you, uh, I mean, is, is most this year focusing on reminders? Do you see yourself working on, you know, like you're saying, you do mixing and stuff like that. Is that still something you're going to focus on this year as well, working on other people's stuff? Yeah, for sure. I love doing that. I lo- and I love writing with other people. That's the thing I've, like, realized, you know, the last couple of years, like how much I love writing with other people. So I do a lot of that. Yeah, absolutely. I did the grade two record, and I'm working with a few other bands now um, and, like, writing, like, all the time. And Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think, you know, me, Jack and Toby did our, our band Transatlantics. We have a record recorded and I, we're just waiting on me to mix it. But I'm super busy at the moment. So, that, But we're hoping to get it out like the end of the year, maybe. We'll see. Nice. Okay, so yeah, we'll probably get more new music from you this yeah, year. Oh, mate, 100%. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there is a record. Yeah. It's a super group, man. It's Reminders in Grade 2. Um, and our friend Toby, who's like fucking, uh, again, he's like another crazy talented guy. He's played in some really, really great bands as well. Um so yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's the Isle of Wight supergroup, mate. And I can't wait to get it out because I think, you know, people are going to really like that as well. 
Very nice, very nice. Well, now tell us where do people go grab this fucking great re- It's a great record. Everyone should go listen to it. Where do we grab the record? Where do we follow you online? All that good stuff. Where do, where do people go now? Uh, online, reminders of the band um, on Instagram and Facebook. And then on Twitter, it's the same, but without the vowels, like reminders without the vowels because it was too long for Twitter. Um, <laughs> and if you want to buy the record, um, then you can do it. Uh, through Wiretap in the US or through Venn Records in the UK. Uh, but if you go on our social media and click in the, the link in the bio, it should take you wherever you need to be. And um, we greatly appreciate it if you did. And if you don't buy a copy, it's on 12 inch vinyl, 500 only, ocean blue. Nice. It's gorgeous. Um, uh, but if you, if you can't afford to buy one or you don't want to buy one, you can try before you buy. Um, and just give it a stream on Spotify and like just give us a message, man. Like we want it, we want to hear from you and you know, chat chat with everybody about what they think, whether they love it or loathe it. We're happy. <laughs> Hopefully uh uh the former, but we'll find out. <laughs> You'll find out. Well, people can hear it now, we'll test it. If you're listening to the podcast, we'll play a couple songs. If you're listening to the radio show, we have like three hours, we'll play the whole goddamn record. So yes, do it. I'd love that. We'll play it front to back. We really will. I, if you're yeah. listening to the radio show, we're gonna play the whole goddamn record. We'll play it. And again, if you're listening to the podcast, you get a few songs, but go buy the you gotta you gotta go find that go to band camp if you're listening to the podcast. You ain't getting buy the disc, record. baby. Buy the disc. Yeah, go buy that shit. <laughs> but, uh, but I guess we'll kick it off. Whichever one you're listening to, we'll kick it off with track one, post Paris Blues. This has been great, and you are listening to me and Leo talking right here on the Power Chord Hour. Right here on the Power Chord Hour podcast, right there was a block of jams from Reminders for you. That one right there was again, again, before that was Waiting on You, and opening up that block of music was the opener off the band's debut record, Best of Beach Punk. That was Post Paris Blues. I want to thank Leo again. I am not even bullshitting. This uh, this Reminders album my favorite thing of 2022 so far. I mean, this is this is easily my favorite, and it's it's getting nicer out too. This is a this is a summertime record, and uh, I I've been listening to it so much in these uh, you know cold and gray months, and I I think the whole time I was kind of like anticipating. I'm like, oh, this is something to like roll your windows down on a nice day and drive you know drive around, kind of like. Uh, I was talking to Leo afterwards, but like Love Breakers, who they uh, who they're they're friends with and have played with, and are going to play with. Uh, I mean, same thing. Like Love Breakers last year made made their record Primary Colors, and it's like my God, talk about a record to like. You just think of a sunny day, just with the windows down, blasting you know fun punk music. And, uh, you know, if Love Breakers did that last year, I think Reminders did it this year with uh, Best of Beach Punk. So go check that out. I mean, what a fitting name, too, Best of Beach Punk. That is that is some stuff you could blast on a nice sunny day at the beach or, or just a cold-ass day, too. Cold, rainy, dreary day, whatever. I guess what I'm saying is that album rules, and you should go check it out. Really, really enjoyed talking to Leo. I could have talked to him forever. And I do want to thank my buddy Jay Vix, who uh, you have heard here on this show, for uh, letting me use his uh, StreamYard account for that one. Really, really nice of him. Shout out to him. Um, it is expensive to talk to people in other countries you know, via phone. I mean, obviously I do a lot of phoners on, on this show. And, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm interviewing someone from the UK or, I mean, Canada is not really expensive. Um, but just about anywhere else, uh, that I've done interviews, I've learned it's better not to do a phone interview. You're, you're much better off doing Skype or something like that, but StreamYard sounds so good. I feel like the quality is uh, really, really good on there. So Jay was very uh, nice enough to let me use that. So shout out to Jay. Great, great dude. Shout out to him. Just a really, just, I mean, so supportive. Um, such such a supportive dude, just, you know, between that and uh, just coming on the show, doing quarantine, having me on quarantines, I should say, all that stuff. Jay's a good dude. So shout out to Jay. Shout out to Leo. Shout out to you for listening to this here podcast and listening this long and uh, just listening to me kind of blabber on at the end. I mean, if you listen to this podcast, you know, I just blabber on the last couple minutes. That's all. It's an outro. There's nothing special here. Just just telling you what songs you just heard and, uh, you know, thank the guests and all that jazz. But uh, I really enjoyed this episode. I hope you did too. And I'll be back next week with another one. That is going to be the April rundown. It is insane. We're already doing the rundown for April. This year is flying by just as fast as the last two have. 
And uh, I don't know, it's crazy. But I am happy because I got to say, we, uh, we've we been keeping up with the guests this year. I feel like this has been, I don't even feel like this is 100%, I can tell you, uh, the most the most consistent that I uh, have had guests on the show, which is really cool. For a long time, kind of a thing I did on the side. More when we were just the radio show, I would, they're just more music centric. I would have, uh, you know, I have interviews here and there. I mean, I started doing them since we started in 2016. So, I mean, I, I've had a guest, you know, I, I've done guests almost the entirety of the show, but, you know, more like here and there is special is kind of like, you know, just little, little special events or whatever on the show. But, uh, you know, this year, this year was the first year, I think, so far. Watch, I'm going to jinx myself. We'll have no guests the rest of the year. But this was the first year where, uh, you know, I, I think I try to consistently get a guest every week, unless obviously, like, next week we're doing the rundown. And uh, I'm quite stoked about it because I think we've had some, I think some of the best guests that have been on the show have uh, just been this year so far. So I'm happy to see what the second half of the year brings. But my God, I can't believe we were going into the fifth month of it already. But what are you going to do? Until then, if you want to stay connected with the Power Chord Hour, uh, for one, you can listen to the radio show this Friday night from 8 to midnight Eastern on 107.9 WRFA in Jamestown, New York. If you do not live in Jamestown, you can stream it on our website, WRFALP.com. When you go there, you will see the listen button. You'll be able to stream us live there, stream the whole station, lots and lots of good programs on there. And uh, if you got an iPhone, go to the App Store, just look up WRFA, and you'll see the WRFA mobile app. And uh, same deal, you can stream us on that app 24-7, wherever you are. If you got an internet connection, you got WRFA, and you got the Power Cord Hour, again, Friday nights. 8 to midnight Eastern. That is every Friday night. Check in on that. And, uh, you know, like I was telling Leo in that interview, I mean, you just heard a couple songs, but the show's four hours long. So when I have guests on, I've I've started playing full records, and I think it's really fun. I think it's – I don't know. I, I, I think if you enjoy the guests and you enjoy who we're talking to, which, I mean, if you listen to an hour-long interview, you probably do, I really enjoy doing that whole interview and then just jumping right into that record. And, uh, you know, just it, it's really fun playing the whole thing. I think it's a really good way after you hear us talking about the album, you might as well hear the whole album. So, again, if you want to check that out, that's on the radio show this Friday night. And uh, you can follow us online at Power Chord Hour on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Hit me up, PowerCordHour at gmail.com. I have a bunch of Power Chord Hour stickers. They just came in the mail. I'd love to send you some. Once again, hit me up. PowerCordHour at gmail.com. And of course, I got to ask you to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. That is That helps the show more than anything else, I'd say. So please go do that. Spread the word, tell your friends, rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, that is going to be it. I'll be back next week with the April rundown for you. But until then, for the PowerCord Hour podcast, I'm Anthony Merchant. Thank you so much for listening.